How's it going guys? My name is Mackenzie and this is episode 17 of my daily design series. In uh, today's episode, I am uh, going to be redesigning Pinterest. So I'm going to start by uh, doing some user flow and mid fidelity wireframes. I'm going to skip the low fidelity because honestly it's kind of boring to watch. But over the next few days, I'm going to be uh, designing various pages on the Pinterest platform. Uh, today specifically, I'm going to be doing the dashboard page. All right, let's do this. So I wanted to start with a user flow wireframe. The, the whole point of a user flow wireframe is to basically see how the user is gonna flow through the site. This helps me think through all the various pages we need. A lot of times I uh, forget various things and uh, this just really helps me think through it more in depth. If you're interested in learning more about wireframing, I have created a video called the what, why, and how of wireframing and I'll link that in the descriptions so you can take a look. And if you're interested in picking up this wireframe kit that includes the user flow as well as the wireframe elements to help you make quick and beautiful looking wireframes, you can visit mckinseychild.me slash wireframe to pick that up. And I'll of course link that in the description as well. So at this point, I have already done the uh, low fidelity wireframes. I sketched out quite a few concepts, but this was my favorite one, so I decided to run with it. The idea here is to have a uh, sidebar with all the categories for the various uh, pin types, and then a header with like the uh, user account and logo navigation, etc. Then of course we have the pins in the main section being the hero uh, main element of this design.
When you're designing for the web, you want to think about how this is going to work on various devices. When approaching something like columns, you have two options. You can either one, have it be a fixed width that when the viewport gets down to a certain size, it breaks and stacks, or you can have it be a fluid width that scales as the viewport shrinks. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. In this case, I would probably go with the fixed width and then have it break in the masonry style that Pinterest uh, already has set up. So that's just something you have to consider when designing for the web. You can't just think about designing for a single device. It really needs to work on various devices. So there's ways to go about that in the design from the beginning. You just have to be conscious about the decisions you're making. So there's three ways that I've noticed that you find stuff on Pinterest. Either A, you just browse through the feeds 
B, you look through categories, or C, um, you search for something specific. That's why I wanted to give this such a visual importance and allow the entire header to be the search input. So I thought it'd be really cool to have a dynamic placeholder text. Uh, so for example, the landscape photography that might change to like men's fashion or women's fashion or just something random every time you refresh the page to show that there's just so much that you can find on Pinterest. All right, that wraps up episode 17. I really hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear your thoughts on this design. It's a bit different than what Pinterest currently has, but I think it came out really well. So I would love it if you got involved and created a daily design along with me. So I wanna see your take on a, a Pinterest dashboard. So if you create a design, be sure to add a link to it in the comments below so I can take a look. And of course, be sure to come back here tomorrow for another design. Oh,